In that federal program under the Obama plan, there's a three-month trial loan modification. What would happen to someone who got into that and wasn't able to successfully complete it? If a homeowner um, defaults on the uh, temporary modification, um, he or she is not eligible for a permanent modification. Um, and at that point, other options would be available, such as the short sale or the deed in lieu of foreclosure. Okay. And as people are, are going through this, what other kinds of assistance is available to them? Uh, and we're going to talk with David in a minute about the kind of assistance you want to avoid, but what, where can people go for help? Because it is tough to pick up that phone and do it yourself. There is some help available, and can you tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. where people should go to look for help? It's very important to get help on this because this is the kind, this is such a complicated process that uh, homeowners should always get help on this. Uh, you can't do it alone. Our website has a list of HUD qualified housing counselors whose services are free and homeowners should utilize that resource. Okay, and, and David, we're gonna give people the warning we always give, right? If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And we know from our office that just as people are struggling to stay in their homes and looking for help with loan modification, there are people out there who are trying to scam the situation. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the red flags that people should look for if they're looking for help with loan modification? Sure, um, and again, that old adage is true as it is in so many areas with consumers. And the sad fact is that with the wave of foreclosures, there are people that are looking to take advantage of, of the situation and profit. Um, so you have to look out for those red flags. Um, for one thing, there are some emails that are just mass emails that are like phishing scams. You want to avoid that. Um, but certainly any ad, whether it's an email or a newspaper or television radio, if the promise that they make sounds too good to be true, um, then avoid it. It's not true. If they promise that they're going to lower your monthly payment, let's say, there are ads where they say, hey, if your payment is now $3,000, come with us. We'll get you a loan modification. Your new payment will be $1,000 a month. Plus, we'll get you $20,000 for a home improvement project. And it doesn't matter if you have equity. Obviously, you know, where is that money going to come from? And they from? can't know that until they talk to you and know what your particular exactly. situation so is. Exactly. Avoid, so uh, avoid promises like that. Um, if they guarantee success is another one. If they demand upfront fees, uh, those are illegal in Massachusetts. So you should certainly avoid someone that's demanding an upfront fee. And sometimes when you speak with the people, they'll say, oh, well, you know, we'll give it back to you if we don't uh, get the loan modification within the next period of months. But, but that's illegal as well. So avoid those people. And then finally, um, if they promise to save your home, if you deed it over to them temporarily, sometimes they set up a straw man and they say, oh, we'll, we'll get you through the woods, De deed it over to me, uh, and you'll pay rent to me. Those types of scams are illegal as well. And you would also want to avoid things like um, some people are getting direct mailings to their home with a, a government seal. And then in small print, it'll say, well, not affiliated with the government. The consumer has to say, if you're not affiliated with the government, why are you trying to trick me with that seal and make me think that you are? Mm -hmm. Stay away from, from those kind of people. Do your research and get a more reputable company um, check for references, check with the Better Business Bureau, and make sure it's a company uh, that can do a good and, and honest job for you. And, and one last question, David, we're talking about two kinds of things. One, if you're trying to modify your loan, the people who would scam you there, be careful, watch for those red flags. And the second is if you are in foreclosure or looking for help through bankruptcy, you also need to be aware of those foreclosure rescue schemes. Is that fair to say? That is fair to say. Um, there are people who will try to flip the property, um, basically stripping your equity and, and, and taking the home away from you. And, and you, won't, you definitely want to avoid those kind of people. And just very quickly before we end, what should you do if you believe you've been a victim of one of these scams? You can contact the Attorney General's office and uh, we'll look into it. Okay, because we investigate those complaints, right? We do. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's time for us to take a quick break. Uh, Judge Kenner, I want to thank you for your time this morning. And David, particularly for your expertise uh, for viewers, but also for the work that you do on behalf of consumers in the Commonwealth every day. Um, for those of you watching, please know that our website at www.mass.gov AGO has a lot more information on this topic, as well as ways to contact us if you have particular questions. When we come back after our break, we're gonna shift our focus a bit and talk about those who are planning to buy a home, particularly first time home buyers, and the importance of being an educated buyer.
ever think about buying a bigger place? Just waiting for a visit from the credit fairy. There is no credit fairy. How else will I get a better credit score? Look, you keep your credit card balances low and only open a new card if you really need it. No fairy? There's no magic to improving your credit, but there's help, and it's free. Go to creditfairy.org. So, April. Yeah? You know your charger's still using energy when it's plugged into the wall, right? Yeah, but uh, that's not my charger. I don't even have a cell phone. Millions of kids are using their energy wisely. What's your excuse? It's easy to tell if you've had way too many. But what if you've had just one too many? Buzz driving is trunk driving. I present to you Algebra 2. Foreign languages. And finally, biology. Who among you will step up to their challenge? Me. Take on the tough classes now. You need them to prepare for college. We're back, and I'm Massachusetts Attorney General Martha Coakley, and you're watching AGTV, On the Record with Martha Coakley. Before the break, we were discussing the options available to homeowners who are struggling to keep up with their mortgage payments. We're going to switch gears a little bit now and provide some information to those of you who are considering buying a home, particularly first-time home buyers. You know, with home prices down and mortgage rates down and the prospect of an $8,000 tax credit for qualified first-time home buyers, many are taking advantage of this opportunity to purchase a home. But buying a home is the single biggest investment that people may make in their lifetime. And before you make such a huge purchase, it's really important to be an educated consumer and to understand the many options that are available today to prospective homeowners. My guests for our second segment today are Assistant Attorney General Chris Barry Smith. He's the chief of our Public Protection and Advocacy Bureau. Chris has led our office's work on mortgage issues and will explain some of the options for buyers today and a little bit of the history of how we got to where we are. And we are pleased to have as w with us also Michelle Miser, who is the Director of Home Ownership and Asset Development Programs at the Alston Brighton Community Development Corporation. Michelle provides education and resources for prospective homeowners and will explain why such education is so important. Now Chris, the mortgage industry has changed dramatically in the past 10 years. Can you give us a real thumbnail sketch on what some of those changes are, and particularly where we are today and what that means for prospective buyers? 